Sultan Muhammad Chaga Khan became Imam of the Shia and Ismaili community in 1885, which was actually the year 1302 in the Islamic calendar. And in 1935, in 1935, he celebrated his golden jubilee that actually marks 50 years of being the Imam of the Ismailis. And to celebrate this very auspicious occasion, his followers really wanted to pay a tribute to him. After all, he had really provided them with uh, such an extensive degree of guidance. He had helped the community to progress uh, spiritually, intellectually, and materially as well. And so the community decided to weigh him against gold and then make the resulting gold a gift to him. And that gift was ultimately reinvested back into the community. So it's not like he uh, used it for his own personal purposes, but he basically did invest that, that gift back into the community. And the first celebration, the first Golden Jubilee celebration, actually occurred uh, in January, on January 19th specifically, 1936, and that actually occurred in Bombay, in Hassanabad. Okay, and there's actually there were multiple celebrations, uh, but the first one was in Bombay. It attracted about 30,000, 30,000 Ismailis, and they came from literally all over the world. I mean, not just not just India, but they came from uh, Burma, Ceylon, uh, Malaya, Africa, the Middle East, and, and so on. And there were also a number of very uh, prominent guests in attendance, people uh, like ruling princes and, and leading government officials, high court judges, uh, foreign diplomats, business magnates, various people who were elites in the city, so to speak. Now, the ceremony of weighing itself was actually performed by the governor, and it came out, he weighed about 3,200 ounces, and that actually translated into uh, approximately uh, 23,000 uh, British pounds. So it was, a, it was a good amount of money raised uh, for the effort. Uh, the second Golden Jubilee celebration, so he had one in Bombay. He had, he had a second celebration in March. Okay, in March, in this time, it was March of 1937. Okay, and that celebration occurred in Nairobi. Okay. And again, he was he was weighed uh, in gold, and, and um, uh, this time about thirty thousand smileys attended as well. And, and to mark, uh, you know, such an important occasion, they did raise a significant amount of money to help uh, fund institutional projects and, and uh, various endeavors that went back to the community. And these these were all uh, golden uh, jubilee celebrations. Uh, about ten years later, um, he celebrated Sultan Mamacha celebrated his diamond jubilee. And the Diamond Jubilee kind of marks uh, 70, or, or actually 60 years, rather, of Imamat. So the Diamond Jubilee marks 60 years of Imamat. And that's, again, a very long time. He was able to serve as Imam for such a long time because he started and uh, became the Imam when he was very young. He was just under eight years old when he became the Imam. And the first Diamond Ju Jubilee celebration was actually conducted on uh, March 10th, 19. Uh, 46, okay, and this celebration took place in uh, Brayborn Stadium in Bombay, and this time there were 100,000 plus, 100,000 plus Ismailis from all over the world, and the audience again included very prominent figures, included 14 ruling princes, including the uh, the Maharajas of Kashmir and Baroda, and the Jam Sahib of Nawangar, so again, uh, quite a showing, and there were messages from goodwill being sent from all over the world, from people like King Farouk of Egypt, uh, the King of Afghanistan, the Shah of Iran, and various other world personalities, including Gandhi. So he, Sultan Mamacha was a very well-known figure. Uh, and this time they actually raised uh, you know, quite a lot more. They actually raised uh, 640,000 pounds. So I'm not, actually I take that back, 600 and um, I believe it was, uh, no, actually it's about right, 640,000 pounds was, was raised uh, in this endeavor. Uh, but I think what I'm getting confused with is that was in the, the first celebration. It was actually a second uh, Jubilee celebration. The first one, as I mentioned, happened in Bombay. There was a second celebration, which took place um, on August 9th, 1946. So August 9th, 1946. And that celebration took place in uh, Dar es Salaam. Uh, Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, Africa. And specifically took place in the, uh, at the Aga Khan Club there. Uh, and this time there were about 70,000 Ismailis attending. Uh, and they raised, uh, this time around, they raised 684, 
thousand uh, British pounds. All right, and this is all raised effectively in diamonds. And then these gifts, you know, all of these gifts uh, were reinvested uh, back into the community. So you know, it's not like the imam kept them for for his own personal uh, benefit, but he reinvested these uh, resources back into the community. Um, to help with a number of endeavors, for example, uh, educational endeavors, even commercial endeavors, and, and starting businesses for the community, and so on and so forth. All right, and then finally, um, you know, the, the platinum jubilee. The platinum jubilee occurred. Um, platinum jubilee occurred. Um, this was around seventy years of Imamat, and, and uh, again, uh, this time there was a, a celebration in Karachi, in Karachi on. I believe it was February 3rd, 1954. So February 3rd, 1954. And uh, this time, uh, as you might imagine, it was weighed against platinum. Um, and the stadium was again packed. Uh, it had about 60,000 people. And, and even outside the stadium, the roads were filled with people, all uh, many of whom could not get inside because it was so packed inside. And at the ceremony itself, after a Quranic recitation, uh, Sultan Muhammad Jaga Khan got up, he raised his hands in prayer, and then took his seat. Uh, and again, as before, the funds were reinvested into the broader community, in, in particular for things like overall socioeconomic betterment. And I want to close this video with a uh, quote from Prince Saduddin Aga Khan. He wrote a quote in an article entitled, uh, The Aga Khan from Kurzan Hitler, A Man Always at the Center of History. And this quote appeared in the, uh, the Times newspaper on November 5th, 1977. And in that quote, uh, Prince Saduddin, let me choose to write that down, so that you know this quote comes from uh, Prince uh, Sadruddin Aga Khan. Prince Sadruddin Aga Khan. He wrote, quote, For my father, education was understandably a priority, and his community exemplifies the success of his policies. Ismaili men and women, the latter among the first to shed the veil, are well equipped in this respect. Ismaili institutions have provided a network of social, economic, and cultural amenities, which are unrivaled in many developing countries. These were made possible to a great extent by the wise administration of funds raised in connection with the traditional Jubilee weighing ceremonies. So again, quite an amazing figure. Um, historically, um, these events were certainly very well attended, garnered a lot of attention in the media and so on. And, and ultimately, I think that it's interesting to look at them from a, a broader context. I mean, these, these events were not Although they were sort of uh, ostentatious, I mean, really the, the money being raised went back into sort of more noble purposes as opposed to superficial ones. I think it was a, uh, uh, quite a, a time in history to, to have experienced it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to making some more.